How much should you charge for fall cleanup? What up, though? This is Keith Kelfus in the video. This video, I'm gonna talk about how much to charge for doing fall cleanup. And let's talk about it right now. Okay, my base cleanup price for fall cleanup is $250. I used to do it for less, but I wasn't making the profit margins that I needed. And we know when you have a small business, profit margin is everything, right? So we do upsells and add-ons as well, like gutter cleaning. So if you start from the top down, every single property needs gutters clean, right? So $85 for a ranch house. 149 for a bigger ranch house, 199, 249. The only reason I charge $85 for this specific client is because it's a small house and it, it takes a couple of minutes. And so I've had this client for many, many years, but you could charge whatever you want. The next thing is winterizing plants. So we go around with the Okasuna trimmers or a pair of hedge trimmers and we cut back all of the, uh, the lilies, the perennial plants, the hostas, and anything that's just gonna die and keel over the leaves during the winter. So everything looks nice and clean, right? Real quick, see all these lilies? These are all gonna get cut back to the ground with some Okasuna trimmers. These as well, these hostas are all gonna get cut back to the ground and removed or just ripped out by hand. I'll put links to the Okasuna trimmers below. They're those handheld scissors. Look at this pond. My friend uh, Jeff Michaels from Pondering Waters actually built this several years ago. And I picked up this uh, client, but uh, Greg Whitstock from Aquascape is where the products come from. Thanks, Greg. You're awesome, man. And one quick side tip. Uh, I learned you gotta make a little cubby for the fish to hide because the herring birds will come and they'll, they'll steal your fish. All this stuff is gonna get trimmed back. All this gets cleaned up. If you do lawn care service, which you probably do, it'd be smart to do a final cut and a nice clean edge, blow down the whole street so it's looking crispy. My debris removal fee is this is a, I could fit 10 yards in here, right? So it really depends on the client. If I'm filling this thing all the way up, you know, I can't give you a price. Even though I have standardized pricing, it's different for when you have clients that you've had for years and years. Like I'm not gonna charge a customer. Um, basically what I'm saying is before I went and changed and upped all my debris removal prices, I was increasing overall prices first, right? So if I have a client that used to be $200 for a fall cleanup and now it's $300 and we only have two tarp loads of debris, I'm not gonna be like, um, yes, $50 for two tarp loads of debris. I just conceal it within the overall price. But with new clients we have, I have a debris removal line item where it says 50, 150, $180 in debris removal. I used to charge $30 per yard of debris removed, but the dump where I dump it, Tower Recycling, jacked the prices up to, they want $80 for me to dump this dump trailer. Then they lowered it to 50, then they went to 25, then they went back up to 60. So I can't get a consistent price anymore because the dump won't make up their mind how much they want to charge me, right? So I literally have to eyeball everything according to whatever the client has and whatever's going on at the dump. Ain't seen you at the top, it's been a while for you 
big you up and they look down on you Take one loss, no one's around for you I won't stop, no, 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 no I won't stop, I won't stop I won't stop, no, 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 no What's up, what's up, what's up? I don't even know what that is. Just stopping in to say hello. We have gotten hit with a substantial wave of fall cleanups and gutter cleanings. My voice mailbox is full. And I can't even get back to all these people. And I hope the same is for you. I know in this business, it can be soaking wet or bone dry. It can be so bone dry where you feel like uh, you're giving up Hope and the spirit of discouragement is one of the most powerful things that can tear you down. Uh, I've been through it myself a lot. And also been through levels of hope. It's like, what up dog? We're gonna blow this shit up and we're gonna get rich. So, I believe that everything is in uh, relativity. We live in a relative universe. And look, why am I speaking in circles? Um, stop in and say what's up. Gutter cleaning, gutter cleaning, this time of year, uh, put out email newsletters, change, even chains, email chains, put out signs, get signs made immediately, post ads on Craigslist, do Angie's List deals if you're hooked up with them, gutter cleaning, charge 150 bucks for a standard ranch house, a two-story house like that, I don't know, 150, 185, 250, if it's a house that you can't do safely, don't even do it, if you are not experienced in doing it. Like, we don't have big 32-foot ladders because, uh, I don't know, we, we just don't have them. I found myself on a couple houses before. I was like, I literally can't do this. And it's not a good place to end up. But there's a lot of low-hanging fruit right now with cleaning out gutters. Climb up with a backpack blower, blow it all out, all the downspouts. Uh, don't do it if it's wet because it'll blow crap all over the house. Or some people will get pissed even if you blow stuff and it goes in their garden beds. It depends on the customer. Our deal is 85 bucks if we're already on the property. Like these two houses behind, we're doing the fall cleanup. Uh, $400 per house for full leaf cleanup and gutter cleaning. If you got to drive out, 150. Uh, aside from that, what do we charge for fall cleanups? A small little tiny house and a subdivision, little subdivisions, small yards, 140 to start plus sixty dollars per truckload anything under 200 bucks for cleanup is just gonna be tough unless you have big leaf suckers and vacuums and riding riding mowers when I used to work with companies you could do a fall cleanup in 35 minutes its leaves aren't too bad just go real slow keep sucking up the leaves and dumping them dumping them dumping them there's a lot of ways but if you don't have that stuff I like to keep our fall cleanups uh, two hundred and fifty dollars and up because you're out there, you know, busting your ass, dragging tarps of leaves before you know it, it's dark. And I know in this business, especially if you have labor, labor, and un labor, unemployment, payroll taxes, and all those ex uh, extra costs, um, if the dark creeps up on you too fast and you didn't get to that next job, you could have just worked the whole day for 50 bucks or free. So, uh, being very cognizant, I've looked at things in my business where, you know, I really go back and do the math, I'm like, I just did all that and I didn't make anything. Well, it's enough to sustain the business, but you don't actually put any money in your pocket. And I talked to my buddy Scotty, uh, he's an entrepreneur, I talk about him here and there. He's like, yeah, but those are the things that feed, just feed your business and keep your guys busy and then the, the other perks are where you make money. You can get to points where you get you know, discouraged or frustrated and you're like, I'm only doing the shit that makes me money, I'm dumping everything else. Well, unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. It's just like a grocery store. They lose money. They don't even make any money when they sell milk. They make money when they sell other stuff. So, just the nature of it all. It's like, you know, I'll do the math. Sometimes I work Monday, Tuesday. By Wednesday, I'm like, dude, I haven't even made any money this week. And then Wednesday, we'll hit this spike. And it'll make up for all that, plus profit. And then Thursday, I'll make shit. And then Friday, I'll hit a jackpot. And then work a half day Saturday. I'm like, oh, my God. I made the same amount of money this week as I make every week, and what was I bitching about? Uh, 
Call on a side note, I'm just making distinctions. I'm gonna, I want to. got to get to this job, and I know you're busy too, and I thank you for your time. Oh, here's some of the bus. If you're having problems getting work, or you're thinking about starting a business, if you're thinking about starting a business, any time is a good time to do it. Uh, if you're starting, trying to cut grass in the middle of the winter, no one's going to call. The best time is now because the experience you get is more important than anything. I know we've all got our own trials and tribulations and things that we go through. If you're going through hell, realize someone else is going through it too. We're all going through it. But the biggest thing that I believe is surrendering to the moment and realizing outside of a totalitarian system, and I wasn't hinting at anything, I was just saying outside of the system and the constraints of the powers we, that be that we live in, um, there's really nothing wrong in this moment. And life is a beautiful gift, and your health is your wealth. It's very, very true. I'm gonna start with a backpack blower. And uh, wish you the best. I got some cool, it's cool episodes coming out soon. We've been doing a lot of filming and uh, fun stuff like that. And stay tuned to my channel, subscribe, and hit the notifications button so you can be the, one of the first people to watch. And I got some fun episodes coming up and a lot of cool plans uh, for this winter. All right, cool. Go on, make lots of money. Make sure you save up for your taxes. <laughs> and uh, that's the name of the game. Just paid off my student loans last week, man. Completely. Spent five and a half, six years paying off debts. I did the math. I've paid an average of, I think, 300 and, uh, don't, I said it in some other video. 350 a month or 400 a month towards debts for the past five years and finally almost completely out of debt you know a lot of people start a business you don't start a you start a business you start a business suffering and broke and in debt and fighting for your life that's what gives you the fear motivation to go out and do this crazy shit so, all right listen to some audiobooks just listen to dr wayne dyer wishes fulfilled it's an amazing book about uh transcendence in he was dying of leukemia when he wrote the book but he was a phenomenally positive dude now I'm reading a book about self mastery uh, I love audiobooks all right peace out I was just trying to like say as much stuff as I could in seven minutes Gutter cleaning can be very profitable if you do it right and if you charge the right prices. It could be a huge headache if you don't and you do it the wrong way. What's up? This is Keith Kelfus. I have a landscaping business in Michigan and I'm going to tell you what I charge to clean gutters and the mistakes that I've made so you don't make them. But you can make really good money offering gutter cleaning and I'm really excited about uh, we're creating a marketing and promotional campaign so we can do a lot of gutter cleaning this year because I've learned if you do it the right way, it's really profitable. Okay, so I'll start right out with the pricing and then I'll tell you the story of why and behind it. Okay? Oh, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. Boop! Hit it. And I'll put links in the description below or around here uh, of my other gutter cleaning videos. Alright, so a one-story ranch walkable roof. Not like this house. But just a one-story ranch is a bare minimum $99. Uh, I have a $299 minimum to show up to any customer's property all year long. We'll make an exception for gutter cleaning uh, because it's such a fast process if you do the process right. Uh, if it's a $99 to $150, I don't know what your man hour rate is or what your model is, but... If it's a split level house and it takes you a little bit longer, 150 to 200, a two story house like this could be uh, 199 to 249, up to 299. Uh, a bigger house, it goes on and on and on. I used to clean gutters for $35 when I first got started. I was running around by myself and I was broke. And here's the mistakes that you can make. First of all, saying yes to a customer 
without publishing your boundaries and your policies of what you will and will not do. Okay, so, uh, or willing to do or able to do. Okay, so a house like that is not a walkable roof. You have to decide in your business and if you're insured or not to do so. And if you are equipped to do something like that, right? A two-story house with a steep roof. When I first got started, I was so interested in just trying to get customers and to make money to pay my bills and save customers money and build a clientele that I would say yes and do a whole house like that for $85 and then find myself in a sticky position. Let me know in the comments below if you're willing to admit it. Where you're like up on the roof and you're terrified and there's ice on the roof. And now you're so scared because you can't get that last little tiny, tiny five foot section of gutter way up over there on the peak. You just can't get it. You can't get it. And you don't even know what to do. And you're not going to risk your life. And you got two choices. You can risk your life to go get that because you told the customer you would do it. You would do it. Or you can go knock on their door like a complete unprofessional and say, Oh, I know that I told you I was going to clean your gutters. But I can't. I did everything. I did everything. But I can't get that little bit. It's just too, too high. And I'm scared. Or there's a third option. You can take your little $85 gutter cleaning job and you can go all the way to Home Depot and you can drop like $400 on like the biggest ladder they have and come all the way back and use it to get that little tiny last section of gutter. And now you're stuck with this big stupid ladder that you might not ever use except for a couple times a year. You ever been in that position? So this is where you start publishing um, up front that we only do walkable roofs. I don't know what your system is for cleaning gutters. There's two systems. One is you can go up with a bucket and you could scoop it all out by hand or with a scooper and then lower the buckets down. It's clean. It's professional. You can inch a ladder around. It's more time consuming. You should charge more for that, I believe, because you got to make your man hour rates. You got to make your minimums to make your business work or else you're just turning over dollars. Stupid. Um, but two is you can literally run around on the roof with a backpack blower and in 30 seconds just blow out all the gutters and blow out all the downspouts and bounce. Well, there's a good compromise here and it's letting the customer know on the phone the process of how you clean gutters. Okay, Mrs. Jones, well the way that we clean the gutters is we, we, um, we go around the gutters with a backpack blower. Uh, there's two ways to do it. One is you can inch a ladder around the house with a handheld blower and blow it out or two is you can walk around on the walkable roof excuse me and you can blow out all the gutters and we blow out all the downspouts and then take a rake and a tarp and we go around on the ground and we blow and rake up into a pile and we clean up the mess that we made and we dispose of it properly and if a little bit of like dirt gets on the siding if the gutter's wet right you just rinse it off with a hose real quick I prefer that method. I prefer the method of blowing it out. I don't care if somebody, oh, that's unprofessional. We do it by hand with the bucket and we're so proud of it. I mean, dude, that's probably the right way to do it, right? I think that's the, the most professional way to do it. I hate doing that so much that I would really rather not clean gutters ever again and I would never clean gutters ever again. So, and there are plenty of customers that are willing for you to just walk around and just blow them out clean up your mess and bounce. Now, if you tell the customer that, then all you might have to move some patio furniture out of the way, but as long as you disclose to them that that's what you're going to do, they're not going to freak out when they see you just blowing stuff all over their yard and all over their patio because you're going to clean it up, right? But I think that you have to publish to the customer and let them know that it's normal the way you do it if there's going to be like dirty water blowing all over the patio and you're going to clean it up the best you can. Otherwise, if you want us to go around and do it with a hand and buy bucket, it's going to be $300 or it's going to be some exorbitantly high price if you if you want me to do it by hand. The reason I'm over explaining this and I'll move the, the video along is because I've promised customers, I've told customers I would clean their gutters I go up, this is in the past, before I learned all this stuff and why it's so important to publish your, your policy and, and what you're doing and get the customer to agree up front so you're meeting expectations. I go on the customer's roof, huge house. I start blowing out the gutters. The customer goes, stop, stop. You're blowing leaves in my garden beds and all over my beautiful lilies. I go, oh, that's the way I do it. I didn't know you do it like that. 
I thought that you were going to take the bucket and go around and scoop it out by hand. That's the way my husband used to do it. So, when you plan on something taking you 30 minutes, and now it turns into three hours, and you're hanging off the side of some lady's roof with a bucket, and you're sitting there lowering down 50 buckets for three hours, and you're freezing, and you don't, you're not equipped, because you didn't bring the stupid little scooper and the stupid little... <laughs> you didn't bring that. And the lady's looking up at you say, Aren't you going to get that little leaf all sticking up on that? And you're sitting there, we're doing a good job. And you're just sitting there, no more profit for me. No more profit for you. Have you ever done gutter cleaning? You know what I'm talking about. Aren't you? And then you're done. Wait, wait, wait. You're all done cleaning the gutters. And you knock on the customer's door. We're all done. Here's the invoice. Well, did you take the hose up there and did you take the hose up there and stick the hose inside of every single gutter? Because I want, I thought, I th I thought you were going to rinse them all down. I thought you were going to rinse them. Because the little tiny black specks. My Uncle Peter was up there in 2014. And he took a picture. And he showed me that there was a little tiny black specks. I don't want the little tiny black specks. You're like, if you've never seen my videos before, you're like, this guy's crazy. Okay. And you're looking at the customer and you're like, what, you want me to get out the hose? The hose on your house isn't even long enough to even take up. I'm going to die. Uh, I don't do it that way. What do you mean you don't do it that way? And I'm not paying you. In fact, I'm going to leave you a negative one star review on Google. <laughs> all right, all right, dude, listen. So you tell the customer. Listen, we go up, we blow the stuff out, we clean it up, we bounce, and it looks beautiful, it's great, we do the job, we clean out the gutters, we clean out the downspouts, not only do we clean out the downspouts, we clean out the upspouts, we'll go around to all the French drains, we'll take the little cats out, I mean the, the buried gutter downspouts, and blow it this way too, so it goes pew, right out the top of the gutter and all over my head, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, all the whole crew will stand there and want to stick the okay, you're like, this dude needs to calm down. It's just so aggravating when you're trying to do good things and feed your family and you keep making stupid mistakes and you don't know how to fix them because the customer imagine in their head that you are going to do like this big bang up $500 job for $85 ain't going to work. But I thought you were going to, you were going to take out the pressure washer and you were going to you were going to paint all, I mean, clean all the gutters too. You said you were doing gutter cleaning. Uh, I had a, oh, I'm trying not to digress too much here. I had a customer, uh, they didn't speak very good English. And on my website once, because we do a lot of window cleaning too. The Q-tip treatment. And I, I don't know, I just took it off some other website, which was not smart. The customer actually thought and this is what i was charging so low for cleaning windows that i literally couldn't even afford to like the gas money to get to their house i'm all done cleaning the windows the whole house i'm excited i'm almost done i'm gonna get the hell out of here and get to the next job and the customer goes where's the q-tips the q-tips i go q-tips what do you mean q-tips it shows right here on your website that you were going to clean the windows with Q-tips! Q-tips! Q-tips. Well, I was, and I broke out into a sweat and I started shaking in this customer's house. I was like, Q-tips. That was a lie! It was a lie! I lied. You know why I lied? Because I wanted to sound professional so you would hire me. And now you're holding me to my word. I was like, oh my god, I gotta go get Q-tips now and I gotta clean the windows with Q-tips. You know what you should do? Bill Nye the science guy. That's what you should do. What I mean is put on a whole science suit with the goggles and Q-tips. 
It's there for until just sit there to 2040. No, nope. the customer's like, will you please leave now? They've they've grown a full beard. The wife has grown a full beard too. There's bags under their eyes. It's been like 40 years, and you're only on the third window. <laughs> Q-tips. So I I had to immediately remove that from the website. God, this has nothing to do with gutter cleaning. I gotta go.